next new podcast we have a new guest i haven't had in a while very good trader very popular guru marine from the traders chick how are you how's it going nice to see you hi thank you so time. much for having me thanks yeah yeah good good to see you has 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 everything what do you so what have you been up to lately it's been a while i haven't seen we, i know we did events in the past and you know how, how you been uh, has the market been treating you Oh, the market has been amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's it's been really good right now. So I'm grateful for that. Um, we, me and my family, recently moved to Barcelona, so that's why I also took a little time off. Oh, um, yeah. So how was that? Do, I like to do a lot of travel. <laughs> that sounds like fun. That sounds like fun. So, yes. so, um, so anyway, yeah. I mean, the market's obviously breaking all time highs. I mean, the rat, we're getting like a huge rat. Do you see these things still going on or something like that? Or is it, you know, you think it's going to back off? I mean, I know, I know you, you're trading a lot more of the e minis, you do a lot more scalping and stuff like that, but what do you even see what's going on? Um, you know, the election is coming, so it's really hard to gauge, <laughs> uh, without getting into any politic water, but it's going to move either one way or another, but the elections is always you know, that chaotic time. So I personally, I never like to predict what the market is going to do. I don't believe any of us can. And especially around elections, you just have to be, I guess, not only aware of what's happening, but don't get too anxious and too excited, right? It's better to kind of sit and wait to see exactly where it's going to go, especially right around the elections and right after versus trading into the election. So that's something that I don't, I don't trade into the election. It's kind of like a big news event, right? You just never know where it's going to go and you don't want to be on the wrong side of it. You know, it's funny. Everyone's like, oh, when, it, when that word comes up about the election, it's like, oh, I don't want to get too political. I don't get, everyone, cause somebody gets offended. But I, I always tell them, you know, Marina, I always tell them, I said, listen, I don't care if you offended or not. Okay. This is trading. We're the same party. And if you feel if you're a person that kind of is going to get offended on politics, because because I because it's so everyone's doing events on you know the election and stuff like that. But there's so many other stocks that you could trade. I mean, like there's so much going on. But the, the thing is this, you know what? We're not here to tell anyone your, your political beliefs. But if you don't like what what one party is going to do to one one stock, then trading's not for you. You know what I mean? Like I always look at it as a catastrophes make opportunities. You saw what happened with the hurricane. Like we had a whole bunch of hurricane stocks that were doing pretty well. And people are like, oh, why, you know, why, why are you actually doing this? I mean, look at those poor people. I'm like, listen, they're going to go to Home Depot and spend money, right? I mean, they're going to they're gonna go to Lowe's. So those are stocks who are watching. If you don't like them, then short them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, right, right, right. You know, sure. And or see, don't and, get involved. Yeah. yeah it's, I always tell my kids, don't look at somebody else's plate. So if you're doing it, it works for you. That's how it should be. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And and that's and that's what ends up happening. So, um, but with that with that said and stuff like that, I mean, so regarding about what you've been doing and over the years, how long have you been doing this for now? How long have you been uh, educating traders? Educating probably eight years, but very actively trading for thirteen, but in the markets for. Decades, <laughs> decades. So, yeah. what, so what motivated you get started doing this? I mean, and what, what, how did you get into you know being the trader's chick? It was actually completely not expected. I was, I never ever imagined that I would be a day trading educator. I didn't even know that that was like a thing. <laughs> but I was really struggling for a really long time. I trade the e minis. And mainly day trading, obviously, but scalping to the point where it's between 30 seconds to three to five minutes, depending on the volatility. And I was struggling. I mean, for two years, I was struggling, losing. It was just horrible. And I kept on losing and to the point where I just had this breakdown because I, I, it was just horrible. And normally what happens is... With, you know, when you have a breakdown, regardless what you're doing, you either completely get away and never go back or you have some kind of a breakthrough. And I just wasn't able to allow myself to walk away. I'm like, if other people are doing it, there's got to be a way, right? Like, what is the way? So I did come back. And before I had three monitors going on, I had 10 indicators. I was in constant analysis paralysis, constant. I didn't know what was up, down. I mean, I was just kind of following along what other people were saying. And what I did was I removed 
two of my monitors and I went from three charts to one chart. I removed all my indicators and I decided to just do like the naked bear chart price action. And then slowly I put in two more indicators with time. I was really going through it with time. And what I recognized is simplicity wins for me. It really won. Like I just really made it simple. It was super, it was just going back to the basics, so literally. Uh -huh. And I also started to realize if I wasn't scalping, if it was longer, too long of a hold for me, I would really mess it up. Like my, I just could not handle it. And then I started to scalp and I was like, because at the end of the day, it's never about the amount of money. It's about the confidence you get when you take a trade, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, 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 sorry, not when you take a trade, when you get money from a trade, it's that profit target, right? Regardless if it's one tick, one point, and especially in the beginning. So what I started to do to gain my confidence, I was going for, one point, really small, really quick moves. And my confidence kept on building and building. And I was very simplified. And this was back when, I don't know if you remember, Val, so right when Facebook groups started to come around. Okay. Like eight that. years ago, almost nine years ago. Uh, and so I started to go, I, I found this one e-mini group on Facebook. It was 30 men. And it turned out that these men were literally retirees from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange floor. And they retired and now they were doing like 100,000 contracts, but they were scalping the E-minis at like one or two ticks. And when I told them that I was sharing what I was doing, they're like, oh, this is how it works. And they were just these humble, incredible people who you would never, you don't see them online. You don't know anything about them. And I honestly, within three months, they kind of disintegrated the group closed, but it gave me that confidence. And then I wanted to really share it with women because I don't believe there's enough women. Women just get too scared. So I started to talk to women and try to really inspire women to start to trade because I believe that we are much more risk averse and can do a lot better. And I, I, I still use Ninja Trader as my platform, not that I am, you know, with them, mm -hmm. but Ninja Trader back then was also kind of like growing and they had people who were using their platforms uh, do videos and they asked me to do YouTube videos with my simple way of explaining things because I'm very good at really simplifying trading. And I started to put up these videos. They were like two minute videos. Now they've removed them all. <laughs> it's a very no. different company now. Um, and from that, I had a lot of men, which I wasn't even thinking. I really just wanted to talk with women and share with women and just to help simplify. And all of a sudden, all these men started to contact me. Can you please help me? I've been trying. I've been losing. And your simplification and the way you talk about it, it really has helped me. And can you share your strategy? And so I started talking one at a time, and then it just became too overwhelming. And I was like, all right, maybe I should just do a course where people could follow along. And then when they're doing my course, they could then ask me specific questions from the course. And next thing I knew, I became a educator. <laughs> Never was even my intention. So there you, you go. Know, same thing. Listen, I didn't go to school to be an educator, you know, but um, I, hell, I went to school to be a landscape architect, believe it or not, because oh, I love, wow. uh, well, because <laughs> I love, you know, listen, my I'm first generation Italian. So my parents came here from Italy they were gardeners, you know, and uh, I was always inspired by it. But, you know, when I was old, said and done, my dad says, you know, you're not going to be, you can't be rich being, you know, a gardener. I'm like, oh, thanks for telling me. He goes, well, I just figure, you know, have the experience, have fun. You know right. what I mean? Then do something you didn't like in school. But, uh, but, you know, living in New York and, you know, and being surrounded, you know, financial capital world, you know, I was very fortunate to be, you know, someone take me under their wing. My father knew somebody and taught right. me how to trade. Let me tell you, I, it's, it's, and, and, and it, that, that's what inspired me to be, be a, a good educator like you, because you know what? There's just too many people lose money out there. You know what I mean? Oh. There's just everybody out there just like they want to learn on their own. They think they could do it. And I'm like, okay, let me know how that works out for you. It's like teach. It's like giving the kids the keys to the car. And it's like, you know, it's like, Marie, it's like, okay, you want to learn how to drive? Go, go, you go drive the key and you let me know how that works out for you. And we're all parents. So we're not going to, 
<laughs> you know what's end up how how what how that's going to end up. You know, yeah, not know. really too well. And, <laughs> and we'll probably end up being in jail. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah you know, exactly. it's funny you brought that. Yeah, but it's funny you brought that up too about women too, because yeah, I, we do have a lot of women traders. I always find women a lot more disciplined. You know, and 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 you know, and obviously, you know, men obviously we teach a lot of women and men uh, when it comes in trading. But yeah, it, it's definitely. Uh, we never was ever intended to us to get into the education business, you know, we just right. we kind of fell into it, but I love teaching people just like you. And, you know, and it's just like, you know, like I, it's funny. I don't know if you ever did this before and I think everyone should do this. You ever use chat GTP? Yes. I did. Okay. Look it up and say, what is the success rate for people that try to trade the market? And it's almost like 90%, 95, you know, but then when you get somebody like, it's like, why would you end this business? But when you look at somebody like us, like if you get educated by one of us, yes. What is your percent? And it almost cuts it in half, you know? Yes. So it's still a failure rate, but it's a hell of a lot better than that. But yes. with that said, I mean, you've been trading a lot of people. You did tell them you like, you like to focus on beginners. Is that right? No, I, beginners just understand it easier, but no, I work with, I mean, I have everybody. And when I think a lot of times they made it too complicated and when they came and found me and I just simplified it, they just, we're able to apply the most simplest aha things, which I show, which a lot of, you know, my husband read this book called The Gray Elephant. No, sorry, The Gray Rhinoceros. Funny enough, there is no such thing as a gray rhinoceros. They're actually not technically gray. But it's so obvious that it looks great that we just don't even think about it. It's just, it's a, the gray rhinoceros. And a lot of times people overlook the most obvious gray rhinoceroses and they don't think that that's what's uh, useful and that's usually just the basics so a lot of people don't even look at the basics as something that could help them and that's mm -hmm. what i really focus on um you know people don't even know like how to utilize uh, support, resistance areas, understanding what a sideways movement is. And, oh, there's been, I can't even tell you the amount of people who are going in for a buy and they're, sh and they're shorting the market. Why is that? I don't say, I had the same problem too. I mean, why it's do people make things so much more complicated yeah. than where it, than, than what it is? I mean, I, I tell them like, I'm like, uh, how do stocks work them down? You know, buyers and sellers. Okay. And support and resistance. So, okay. So why are you adding these 10,000 indicators there and yes. so making it so complicated. Yeah. I can't even read it. I look at these things. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I know. pure analysis, but I, I there's I joke around. I don't know if you've ever used to watch that show. King of Queens. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just such a funny he's, show. He's, 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 he's from, it's based out here oh, on please. Long Island. Yeah. So he has, there's this one episode where he buys a 96 inch television and he, and this is during the day of direct TV where there's like thousands of channels, you know, we don't have that anymore. And him and his buddies are sitting in this room and he's clicking a thousand times. And his friend is like, stop, you're going to trigger my epilepsy. <laughs> I'm like, this is what I feel like when I see some of these people with these outrageous indicators and lights. I'm like, none of these make sense to you. And they make, if they don't make any sense to me and I know what I'm looking at. Yeah. yeah it's just so My stressful. old office, I mean, you can see where everyone now is like, we're basically all remote, you know what I mean? But my old office, I actually, uh, I have three sons and what I end up doing, you know, they, they you know, we always come home and they draw you these pictures and like, and like, what the hell is that? Right. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to do it all this stuff. I mean, eventually they just say, dad, look what I beat for you today. He says, you know what? This looks like a chart. So what I did in my office, I started taking them all and I put them all on my wall and people's like, Oh, they look so cute. What does it look like? Oh no, that's, 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 that's what people are reading when they look at charts. So it's, it's I, I look at it as my kids drawings from school. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's pretty cool. You got all these crazy like lines and whatever. So it's pretty funny. It make no sense. No you sense. Can't do, you can't do anything with it. It's, you know, in yeah. that movie, the big short, it's like one plus one equals fish. Yeah. You know, and that's pretty much what people are doing because I think they're seeing all these people talk about these different indicators. And I was just the same at one point. Mm -hmm. And you have to just find the indicator that works for you, that you feel most aligned with. Well, you know, and you know what? Listen, which leads us to that question. So, you know, obviously, even to even being an educator and doing it for a while, and we always learn how to become better educators because you've got to be a good listener. What have you seen like most people's challenges that they've been having, you know, like that they have to overcome other than, you know, obviously the indicator and keeping it simple. Is there anything else that you've learned over the years or, 
you know, that been, that people have been having is issues wise? Oh yeah. They want to be rich yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't want to do any work. They just, they like, it, 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 you, you said that people are losing money to the market. I call it donating money to the market because they don't, they don't even, they don't do anything. And I'm just like, all you need is at least like have a good chart, do something, just start with something. And you know, I get, I get these emails. Oh my God, I lost a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, you signed up with me. I offer private one-on-one. -on -one. Not once did you even open your course just because you bought it. You know, you have to work with me and I'm here to help you with that. I can't help you save it now. You know, and that's a real big thing is people just aren't putting in the time. And yet, you know, if you want to be a pilot, we all know you need to go to pilot school. You need to do your hours. It's understandable. You want to be a doctor. You learn things when you want to trade. You'd still you need to understand how to read the charts. You need to understand what you're doing. This is our valuable money. And I find that people just want to bypass the learning curve the learning, I shouldn't say curve, the learning and think that they're just, you know, just because they have some money, they're going to be millionaires. If it was that easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing that I found. People just, yeah, I, I, I try it and, and, it's, and, and you're right. And I think a lot of people like they were, they're in a hole sometimes and want to get you to help them dig, you, dig them out of that hole. Yeah. And I try to stay away from people like that. I'm like, nah, you know what? You're better off just giving your money to, to a broker. You know, or just put it, you know, put it because if you're not going to put the time in it and you said it perfectly uh, and it's not that much. I mean, you're not asking that much. No. Like I always try to tell everyone, Marina, I, I tell them like, listen, losing is actually a good thing. They're like, what do you mean? How was it? Because if you know you're going to lose in trading. Right. And the thing is this, when you lose, you're supposed to learn that mistake. Right. You know, to do it again. It's like going on a bike. You're going to fall off it. You'll just learn not to, you know, turn the steering wheel that way. You learn the yes. other way. You're going to learn how to do it. But, um, but there, there is that little learning curve that everyone has to get to, to get through. I find it, um, I don't know if you have the same issue, but like, I also find that people are, are not trading enough because if you, you sit there and you watch the screen all day, you know what I mean? Like you can't learn as doing one trade a day. I mean, if you're doing this as a business, you, you know, you, you, you got to get in it. You got to close out that position. You know right. what I mean? Right. So how many trades do you usually tell people? So how many trades does it take before someone really learns how to trade? Oh, okay. well, first of all, I personally only trade between 30 minutes to about an hour and a half a day. My mind just doesn't work that much more. Um, and I want to enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs> you like me. Um, you like me. So, so within that time frame, I actually see the opposite a lot. I see a lot of people what is just over trading they over -trade. Um, yeah because it's such a short time frame and it is scalping oh my god sometimes it's like 40 trades within an hour and a half i see some of my students and i'm like first of all you'll be pummeled just in the commissions alone and they're not they're just getting in oh it's a big bar it's a big candle bar and they're getting in and a candlestick and i'm just like you, yeah, so I find the exact opposite. I find that people are over trading. And I actually came up with the term FOMAT, <laughs> which I find a lot of people are dealing are going through is fear of missing a trade. And they are chasing trades, right? Like they're like, oh my God, this trade it's good. Or they were like maybe they were talking to somebody and then they saw it and then chasing a trade. And you know how it goes with chasing a trade. It turns on you, you lose money, the revenge trade, and it's this downward cycle and then everything goes to shit. Right? So that's what I've been finding is a, that, that people need to understand that there's always another trade coming. There's always yeah. another trade coming. If there wasn't, we just need to stop right now. <laughs> Cause what's the point, right? Yeah, so you know, I said that today. I, today I was talking the exact same thing. I mean, you, you see the, the Dow and the S and P breaking all time highs, right? And I don't see anything other than it's bringing it down. And people are like, is it too late to get in? Is it too late to get in? I'm like, listen, is it too late? Because they said, oh, I should have gotten last week or last month or I should got before COVID. I say it every day, right? But we're not like, you know, that's the problem where it comes to swing trading and options trading. I said, well, if you day trade, shit, there was great stocks today. Drug thing was up almost four hundred percent. 
fun, you know, uh, P H U N. I showed you that one. I went, I mean, there's new ones every day. Yes. You know what I mean? You can wake day. up in the morning and you didn't miss anything. And that's how they convert into those type of trades. So like you just said, don't ever think you missed out. Yeah. You know, there's, there's something that happens every day, yes. but, um, Absolutely. but with, with, with your students, um, anything that ever stand out of a student that you probably, you know, um, that found that that you learned that mistake that they made that someone here probably, you know, uh, won't do, make that kind of mistake. You know what I mean? Like I always had a student that I always stand out in front of me that I was trained that you know had an issue, you know, and I learned their mistake. And I'm like, wow, you know, that's a pretty popular mistake that people are making. You ever had that, have that issue with somebody? Um, a lot of times, people are mistaken buy from a sell. That is a. I know it sounds so rudimentary. But I'm shocked that people are thinking they're putting in a buy and they're putting in a sell. And of course, they're getting, you know, stopped out and they're not understanding. I find that to be a lot. Another really big problem that I'm finding with a lot of students is they don't want to take the time to learn their platform. And when you're on a charting platform, you need to know it's kind of like driving the car analogy. You need to know where your brake is. You know, need to know how to reverse. You can't be putting money and learning from that. And I see a lot of people doing that. Um, a mistake all the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really important. Learn it, guys. It takes 30 minutes. Dedicate that time, but it will save you thousands. And honestly, another really big issue, and it's more of a mental issue, I find. A lot of people are coming to trading in a desperate uh, mindset. My father is in the doctor. I need to make money for his medical bills. I'm like, that's the last way you'll ever make money because you're so emotional already. You're never you're, so. I don't want to call it play money, but I definitely you need to come in with the money that you are okay with losing, and it's not going to starve your child or your father isn't going to get the medical care he needs. And that I actually find a lot. It's it's very mm. sad. Yeah, that's actually actually makes a lot of sense. I do, and I agree. I think there's some people get into this. They think it's a casino, yeah. And think like you know, I gotta I, I gotta pay my rent or my mortgage or something like that. And they yeah. think like, you know, this you can't look at it that way. It's basically a job. You know, you take in this job, and it requires you to go to work and probably you have to do some stuff. And it just because one of the things I do, Marina, I always tell everybody like, you know, how much money you want to make. Right. And they're like, Oh, I want to make 20% on my money. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Right. What do you got $5,000. <laughs> you got $5, you're going to want to, you want to make, you want to make a thousand dollars. You're wasting your time. Go work at McDonald's at 20. Right. 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 You right. Know? But like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, but then there's people like, Oh, I want to make, you know, a half a million. I'm like, okay, well, do you make a half a million now you right. know, for a living? Like, no. What do you make at work? Oh, I have a hundred thousand dollars salary. I'll say, okay, well, listen, if I give you 50% raise, you happy with that? It's two hundred dollars a day. Right. I mean, that's how you gotta look at it. And you don't really need to make that much, you know, to make a day's pay to make it worth it. But uh, yeah, I, I find that with the same issues with people. But I've heard people say they want to make a thousand dollars a day, and I'm like, So what are you doing now? Oh, I'm losing 50 <laughs> every day. I'm yeah. like, how about we make 50? <laughs> So what do, what what is the what would you say is the average that somebody that you would try to say to get you know to I mean obviously the goal is the more consistent the longer you do this you will make more money down the road but what's a good what's a good uh, starting point I think once you have your strategy you really trust it you could easily make between two to four hundred dollars a day conservatively so absolutely it depends you but you need to have that strategy because yeah. once you have that strategy then you could just load up. Right. Right. Um, again, because I'm an e-mini trader, it's all about contracts. So even if I'm going for one point, one point is 50 bucks. But if I have 10 contracts, it's 500 bucks. So and it's still the exact same strategy. Right. Nothing changes except that I just load it up. So, so that. Yeah, it, it's it sounds simple. It's obviously not. <laughs> um, but you could do it. You could do so it. what? So what is your strategy like? Like what? How did you find your strategy? Was it be like you said? Was it the Facebook thing that you said earlier? Or no, like, I was um, in the Facebook. I was confirmed that I was that scalping was because scalping sounds kind of negative, and a it's lot of people. Word. I mean, everyone like because what happened in two thousand? I was trading for thirty years, and everybody think like, "Ooh, you're a day trader. Ooh, you'll lose all your money." Right. And I mean, like 
like my argument, we tell everyone, Marina, who trained you? Like, right. obviously you did it and you lost miserably. And then first thing I always ask them, like, well, how did you lose that money? You know, like, oh, I had this position and it went down like 30 points. I'm like, really? I never saw a stock very rarely go down 30 points in a day. Oh, no, 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 no. It was a swing trade. Oh, now you're a swing trader. Oh, that's why you, you got to clarify what you're doing. But yes, yeah, that's you know. another. OK, that's another problem that I'm finding people. If you're swing trading, you do not want to be looking at a year chart or a one minute chart. I find that a lot. So you need to know your time frame. If I'm a I am a scalper, I personally like tick charts. But let's say we're talking about minute charts. So my min, I work, look at one to three minutes because my trades don't usually go that long. But if mm -hmm. I'm swing trading, then I might look at an hour or even better, a day trade, a day chart, because that goes more into my time frame. So I find that a lot. If you're going to be a swing trader, one minute charts is so pointless, so useless, right? You need to find that balance. And mm -hmm. I find that people are so off. They don't, they don't know even with that, like the most basic thing, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to close your position out today? You're going to hold it for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is, right? How many charts do you have up and running at one time? Oh, like, one. I, guess I, don't... I only have one because I do mainly only e minis, so it's just the e mini, right? It's just right. the SMB one. I love it, it's my instrument. I'm like, I always say, you know, Liberace could have played probably any instrument and done it beautifully, but he stuck to the piano, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Master you know your I'm... one and then grow. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because there are so many people that are probably listening and they got to get it. They have to get the four, six monitors. They got to oh, yeah. get they got to get the, you know, the 15 charts and stuff like that. And, you know, we actually we do a lot of coaching at Cyber University, too. And one of the biggest things that we when we do our coaching is we do a Zoom meeting with them immediately to see the layouts and be like, I don't think I really need to screw around my lay. I, I guarantee you, I said 80 <laughs> yes. percent of what's on your screen, you don't need. Yes. You're thinking too much. And just like you just said, you got one chart and that's, you know, I mean, like, and you could always like customize it, maybe, you know, maybe yes. make a daily chart yearly can go back and forth, but because you're, because you're specifically scalping, you know what I mean? Yes. You know, you know, if you got to look at the biggest picture, yeah, I can understand it. But yeah, some of these people just got like way too many charts. And they don't the more you have, the more you think, <laughs> the less you're going to trade. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, so what, what do you have new that's going on right now um, at the Traders Chick? I mean, like, is anything you see that you're preparing as in, you know, a new style of trading? Is everything still working the same for you with the markets and changing at all? you see anything happening that you're changing your style? Are you teaching differently? Um, no, because I have found that my style could work under any condition. That's what I personally love, that I don't really care what is happening in the market if it's going up or down because i'm pretty much a technical analysis trader i love technical analysis i absolutely live by it it's my holy they're my holy grails so i have i'm pretty simplified i only have two actual indicators which is my emas and the macd's and i love where there's divergences like really basic stuff and it tells me so much so a lot of people are like, oh, how can you just be sitting there and waiting for the right thing or know when to get in? And it's people forget that when you learn how to drive a car, when you take that car in the road, you it's a strategy that we have. It's not just a given. Right. A lot of people depends on the country you live in, won't stop at a red light. Right. But like we know that that is part of the strategy. If we don't stop at a red light, we might get pulled over. We might get hit. We might hit someone. So I rather not take that risk. I know when there's a red light and I know when my chart tells me there's a red light or a green light. And it's been pretty consistent regardless of what market, what's going on, going up, going down. I stay away from sideways markets, but I love them in the same token because that's when the breakouts or the transitions happen. And when you spot that, I mean, you could be at the beginning of a trade of a trend, which is usually the best time to enter because that's when there's the most amount of strength. So, uh, so I mean, what made you pick those strategies, those indicators more than other ones? I mean, there's probably a thousand of them out there. Did you yes. just learn all thousand like most people do? And then just been eventually just, or just like, who, like 
what mentored you to get those those, um, those specific no, ones? I funny enough, I actually was part of different groups and mentors, and they had a lot of indicators. And I had them all. I was in constant analysis paralysis. I was constantly losing. That's when I removed them all. And it's That's funny because paralysis. a lot of yeah, a lot of times people also hear like these, I don't know, hot indicators, you know, like Bollinger bands, Fibonacci's, Kettler bands, whatever, like some that are more used than others or just more talked about than others. And I recognize that when I removed them, I felt like this weight lifted off of my shoulders. And then I just slowly started to put in, I tried different ones. And the ones that work best for me, MACDs for me are just my favorite. They, yeah. I find them to be the least lagging ones. Um, and my EMA lines, I actually don't use them so much for indicators as much as where I enter and take my trades. Because mm -hmm. you never want to be a market order, right? You want to have your trade at a specific time because then you know you're kind of in control of that trade. So, so I use that. Okay. All right. I, that makes it makes a lot of sense. Is there any specific time that you have it set at or? No. So when the market starts to move in a certain way, then I start to put it in and I follow along. And if it doesn't fill me, like I said, there's an, always another trade coming. Um, so usually it's with the setups. And if I start to set, see divergence, if I start to see anything, I just remove it. I don't want to have, I'm a very conservative trader at this point. I'm, I know what works at least 85% of the time. And there's always at least two or three good trades that are going to pass through within a 45 minute to a, an hour time frame. I mean, time during my session. Right. And that's enough for me. And I'm happy with that because mm -hmm. there's a whole day for me to enjoy. <laughs> so what, 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 that, uh, well, and we're going to talk about that too, because you know, I want to see uh, what you're doing on those, all the time for, that you have in your free time, you know what I mean? Because you don't only really trade, but when is the best time for you to you find the best time to trade and the worst times to trade? Well, before I lived, we just moved to Barcelona. So now I live in Europe. So the morning session is wonderful. It's 2.30 PM. But before we lived in Central America, we lived in Guatemala. So the morning session was too early. So I was doing the afternoon session after lunch. And honestly, I find them to be both really good. I don't like lunch because lunch, everybody's out for lunch. Very few traders. So the volatility volume is not that much. But yeah, you could do both. I find them both really good. Both so good. Yeah, on... I just came back from Greece uh, myself and I was there and it's pretty cool because you're right. Like you're in Barcelona and you're like, the market opens up for you at two o'clock. So you pretty much like I was there and I was like, you know what? I had, obviously I was there for a wedding. I was on vacation, stuff like that. Market for me opened up at six o'clock at night. So at least yeah. I had the whole day, you know what I mean? So you yeah, the European markets, day. yeah, European markets work pretty good for some people here. Um, and then obviously, you know, we have the afternoons. So you know, I mean, like if you're all the way West Coast, it works yeah. out for you too. You could do that, you know. Yeah, you don't want to wake up at six in the morning. I mean, come on. There's some people out there, they do it. I had they do people. it, but they, I sometimes I feel people think they have to do it yeah. when you really don't. You can find really good setups throughout the day and still enjoy your day and still enjoy your sleep. Um, so, yeah, yeah I yeah. find it to be pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's a big difference. The only people I think I have a problem I get is uh, people like in Australia. Yes, Australia. They, yeah. <laughs> they do. But their market is good. If they learn how to work their market, you know, they can work it really well. Well, that, that's, a, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that also, I get that all the time. I get people from India, I get people from Canada, you know, from different parts of the world. I mean, can your, can your strategy work on other exchanges? Yes. And I have students from all over the world and they, they have no problem using it. They can yeah. still use it. Yeah. So it's just because they're able to fully understand what the market is talking and telling them versus just kind of guessing and being unsure and, kind, you know, kind of just, yeah, being in a state of uncertainty and then praying, <laughs> please, please, please let it work. Yeah, that's not, that's not going to work, right? <laughs> well, I would say if you're hoping you're not in a good position in trading. Yeah, you don't want yeah. to hope in trading. You just got to basically, you know what it is. I mean, you, you just got to be more calm. And like, I don't go down and tell my wife, like, oh, honey, look, I made a thousand dollars today. Like, you know, it's part of your job. I'm like, well, 
you're supposed to make that. You know what I mean? Right. That's what, you don't have to come down every two minutes. It's it's the way, the way it works when it comes out to trading. Now re regarding uh, yeah, so you're in Barcelona. Huh? That's that's amazing. So you you trade an hour an hour a day. You do some of your uh, education. What made you go to Barcelona? Just out of curiosity. Um, my husband's Guatemalan, and funny enough, <laughs> if you're going to have any benefit being a Guatemalan, and my sons are half Guatemalan, is once you get to Spain legally, we have a legal visa. They could become citizens within two years. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. a really big deal. And my sons are um, rock climbers, and we live in Catalonia, which is one of the best rock climbing and climbing for competitions place in the world. So yeah, I can't climb. <laughs> and I can work anywhere I want. So for me, it was a, a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what's great about this job when it comes to trading. You could do it anywhere in the world, and you could travel anywhere. You just got to have the right setup, you know, and just yes. have the right group people hang out with that you could trade with, and then go from there. Yeah. So, so what do you right. do on your? So now you you're doing this for a while and everything else. So, what are you doing on your on on your time off? Is that what you're doing? Rock climbing. Um no, I actually don't climb. <laughs> um, I've also have a travel site that I have actually had way before I began trading. So I've been traveling. We Travel is very, very important to me. So I still have that. It's called the Travel Experta. It's a blog, my travel site. And this summer I took off. I don't know if you've ever heard of Camino de Santiago. The so it's it's I don't I don't want to say pilgrimage because people automatically think it's religious, but it's 70 percent of the people aren't. And I did <clears throat> one of the longest, the 800 kilometers, which is like 500 miles you walk to Santiago. And then me and my husband rode to the end of the world. So you can look it up. It's called Camino de Santiago. It's one of the most famous uh, walks in the world. Oh, wow. And I did that. It took me seven weeks. So I enjoyed that. I totally took off. And that's the beauty. You can. Once you're yeah. making money, you can, you can take time off without worrying, you know? So did you ever live in, in this, when did you live in the States though? When did you leave the States? I left the States over 20 years ago. We lived wow. in Costa Rica for seven years, Guatemala, 14 years, and now almost two years here. Wow. wow. Yeah. My kids grew up as expats. Well, they weren't expats. They were born in Costa Rica and Guatemala. <laughs> but you still, a, yeah. you still have a good, uh, an American accent too. I yeah. mean, when you really being a, gone that long, I guess. So, uh, yeah, but I still speak English everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we speak English. Yeah. Well, what's nice about yeah. Europe too is that you, there's just so much to see and there's so many interesting people that you – all different cultures and everything. I think that's so that's that's so cool yeah. uh, when you go when you go to those different areas. Like I do a lot of traveling. I just came back from Canada too. I did a – we did an event up there in Canada. And uh, yeah, I mean like the culture and the, the style. You meet so many interesting people. But the funny part about the whole thing, everybody trades. Everyone oh. likes it. When they know you're a trader or especially a mentor, they just love to ask questions for you. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Well, everybody loves it. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody just uh, asked you a question here uh, regarding it in the trading room. Uh, where's your general scientific world? It's peaceful walk in the world's rights. What's that? In the hundred rules? Oh, wait. In the hunter? I don't, um, not really sure what that means. I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so regarding about the market, what are you seeing, you know, as, or what are you preparing or telling your students how to prepare for the future? What's going on at the market? Are you seeing any changes coming up or anything going on or anything that's going to happen or how should they deal with the election or whatever? So I told them, well, I'm actually going to be doing like a special for the election to be able to help gauge them as well, because it's really important to guide people during moments when they're having difficulties or not like comprehending that, what the, that the market could go either way. So when you're prepared for any of it, that's all you need to do, right? Like once you're prepared for any situation, you are able to manage that situation. So that's really what I focus on with my students. I really focus because it really does not matter which way the market is going to go, really. Because if you understand what it's going to do, then you could get in at the right places. And that's the most important thing. So do you think anything's going to happen? Like, does anybody should prepare to anything regarding about this election? If it's going to be Harris or, you know, Trump or whatever it is, can anyone, does that affect you or do you even care people how they should, or how they should deal with the one versus the other? Not really. What about you? What do you think? Me? Yeah. I mean, listen, there's certain sectors I, I, I'm going to look at 
that one might help one the other. I mean, I think people should be listening, you know, and as a trader, don't look at the, you know, the, I guess it all comes down to policy, right? I mean, like, and certain things are going to affect certain companies and so I'm going to benefit, so I'm going to get hurt by it. So, you know, you're seeing it now, you know, that certain companies, you know, whoever's leading in the polls, you can see certain things are happening. But, you know, to me, it's like once every four years, right? I mean, yeah. but there, there's a new adventure every day in trading. You know yes. what I mean? Like, you know, um, I mean, we, are, we, we were talking about, you know, a previous President Trump, you know, his stock has been doing incredible the past two weeks. I don't know if anybody's been looking at it. I mean, Which like, one? why is it, why is it doing well? You know, is it maybe Elon Musk is thinking about buying it? You know, who knows? You know, it could right. be a lot of things. Yeah, you don't know what's going on behind the closed but, you know, But every day, I'm like, but there's people like they look at it like, oh, you know, I, 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 I'm not a Trump fan, whatever it is. They say, I hate it. And then they go, go short the stock then if you want to get back them and let me know how that works out for you. And I tell them you can't do that in trading. That's how you get yourself in trouble. Um, if you don't take your political beliefs right. or, or whatever. Well, you, you make know, it oh, emotional. You, you take out emotional. the... Validity, valid, yeah, the, <laughs> make it valid, right? It has to have no emotion in it. And it's no. hard because it's your money, but that's the only way you'll actually become successful. Yeah, you can't yes. fall in love with these stocks. No. You really can't. Once you do, they're going to break your heart. Yes. You know, they're going to yes. really break your heart. Yes. So any, um, so any, any last minute advice that you want to give anyone uh, regarding about your trading, any books that you recommend, any movies, any advice that we got before we, uh, you know, uh, you want to give I, would, I really recommend. So I find that a lot of people trading is probably one of the most in your face things that you're ever going to do because you have to make in the moment decisions. And that's when you start to really see your demons <laughs> come to life. And I find that a lot of people ignore those demons versus listening and working them out and understanding where they're coming from. So I personally believe in, I can't really pinpoint a specific book. At this point, I have read hundreds of books that work with your mindset and mental toughness, but it's really important. Any book that you start with is something better than what you've had before, right? In the mental health, and I don't want to say mental health, mental toughness and mindset. Mindset is absolutely everything. And ha that's pretty much, I recommend anybody and everybody to do from the beginning. Yeah. I tell everybody, it doesn't have to be a trading book to teach you how to trade. I think a lot, I think a lot of it is, is mental. I think most, uh, psychological, you know, is where people get losing in trading. So anybody that I, I look at that you find that you want to learn a little bit more about the psychological part about it, how to get your mindset, you know, that's basically, you know, where you're going to, you know, that's why I think you got to start because that's about 70% of the failure rate, you know, oh, right absolutely. there alone. I think more. <laughs> yeah, probably it is more. I think it's more. It's so mental. Yeah. And so emotional. Once uh, you can separate yourself from that and really trust the strategy and trust what you're doing, it's going to be a whole other thing. I think a lot of people don't trust right? What they're doing. They're not sure. And yet they're still putting their money in the market. And that's the most important thing of all. I also advise everyone trade one share. You know, if you yes. can't make money with one share, you're not going to make money with a hundred shares or a hundred oh. contracts or whatever it may be, a thousand, ten contracts. So you know, learn from that and then work your way up. Yes. I say the same thing. <laughs> Start small. It's those teensy tiny wins that are going to be the big wins. Right. Absolutely. Right. And that's how, that's how you learn how to trade the business. The longer you're in, longer you're in, longer you're in this business, the better you're going to get at it. You know. Absolutely. Yes. But Maria, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate thank it. You. I'll definitely have you back. And you know, please let me know if there's anything you you know anything new you've been working on. Love to share it. And uh, you know, appreciate uh, all your uh, all your work that you're doing for people out there. I really well, appreciate you. your work for you. And thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you for <laughs> having me, Fausto. It was really fun. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And uh, don't forget, we'll be back again tomorrow for another podcast. We're here live every week at 11 o'clock, every Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and ring that bell to get those alerts. Appreciate it, everybody. Happy trading.